Every day, I am getting one step closer to having another healthy baby, and Caraway Home is helping me do that. Their ceramic, naturally slick surface cookware allows you to cook with minimal butter. Uh, they're very easy to clean, just a little warm water, you wipe it down. And the best part is, is that Caraway products are made without any toxic materials like BFASs, BTFEs, and a bunch of other things like I can't even pronounce. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, right now, visit Caraway wayhome.com slash tsfs to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10 percent off your next purchase this deal is exclusive to my sarah fraser show listeners so visit carawayhome.com slash tsfs or use code tsfs at checkout caraway non-toxic cookware made modern it's time for you to see what all the fuss is about read about their five-star reviews and why so many tsfs fans buy caraway home order now now streaming only on Disney Plus. My name is Taylor. Welcome to the Eras Tour. Yeah. Experience Taylor Swift's record-breaking Eras Tour. We do, we do, we do, we do. Does anyone here know the lyrics? Prove it. Taylor Swift: The Eras Tour, Taylor's version, so with four additional acoustic songs. Now streaming only on Disney Plus. On April 5th, you must be very careful, Margaret. It's the girl. Witness the birth. Bad things will start to happen. Evil things of evil. It's all for you. No, no, don't. The first omen. I believe the girl is to be the mother. Mother of what? Is the most terrifying. 666 is the mark of the devil. Hey! Movie of the year. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. Who said that? The first Omen, rated R, under 17, not a minute without parent, only in theaters April 5th. Sarah, can they uh-huh. Sarah, Sarah. David Yontif, one of the highlights of my Sarah. week by love. Um, and in fact, I just want to say to the person that left me a two-star review, and they said, they said to me this week, and I will never, never listen to them. Where is it? Where is it? Two stars. Lose, period, David. When you drop David, I'll be back. Well, goodbye. It's not happening. Kiss my ass cheeks on the way out, honey, because I love this man. I do not care. I love when you get one-star reviews. I believe you got a one-star, and somebody called us Oscar and Elmo this week. I thought that was great. Oscar, I I am here, honey. (laughs) I'm like, no, yeah, I'm Oscar. I'm a little upset because isn't Elmo bigger than Oscar? (laughs) Wait, wait, excuse wait. me you got the insulting best. me to my face people <laughs> you got the best review this week it said if you want to idiot low life um oh my god where is it oh my god i'm oh, telling you nothing number. upset the people more than you thinking lala and randall were married one star on david yondiff's not even worth a hate listen want the most garbage take on just about anything then yontif and the grouch and his trash can pal elmo frazier are Perfect. <laughs> you just love being called Elmo, girl. Elmo oh, is bigger. It, I don't think so. Oscar the Grouch is bigger, right? Can I tell you what makes me really Go on, happy, Oscar. Though? Go on, baby. What? I don't know if this is really happening, but I pray it happens. What? This whole ban on TikTok, I would love it. I would love nothing more than for TikTok to go far. You remember that piece of shit? That piece <laughs> of fucking shit up my fucking a-hole called Club House. Bye-bye, bitch. Remember that shit, oh Clubhouse? God. I hope TikTok goes bye-bye the way MySpace and Clubhouse did. I'm praying. I'm praying TikTok goes away. God, do you remember when everyone had to be on Clubhouse during the pandemic? Oh, oh, that Clubhouse. Was so Clubhouse. Fuck <laughs> your mother. Fuck her. Come on that was the stupidest thing in the world. The stupidest oh, thing. Wasn't that the I dumbest like, shit you'd ever heard in your life? You'd all get on audio and they'd have different groups. Hey, today we're talking about podcasting. Come to a live comedy set. And it just was like so, oh my God. And you know what? I wish I had it to do over again because I would have gone into all those chat rooms and just trolled people. Like just trolled the fuck out of them. You know what I mean? You would have gotten banned from Clubhouse. Like going in there, world politics, the war in Ukraine. <laughs> Guess what? I've been like, um, I'm going to Ukraine and um, 
I'm going to try to fuck all the soldiers um, to create world peace. Do you guys have any? Should I get my clip here? Should I not? Like, I would have just, like, Clubhouse was so stupid, wasn't it? So um, all the fucking sheep in our business, the sheep, the people that fucking follow like sheep, they all had to get on there. Fuck Clubhouse. Guess who, speaking of trolling, guess who is not trolling? She is coming right out and saying, Mo better run. I don't know where you live, Sarah, but here in Beverly Hills, Mo better run because he is done in this town, Mauricio. Miss Paris Hilton is disgusted with her uncle, Mauricio. <laughs> Soon to be not uncle because when the divorce happens, I guess it won't be your uncle anymore. You know, we have this trailer for Mo's show, season two, Buying Beverly Hills. I watched season one. I had Allie Lutz okay. and her friend Jessica, I think, on the show. Okay. Neither of which I see in the trailers. But uh, we have the trailer for Buying Beverly Hills. I'm going to watch season two. I love real estate porn. And um, apparently uh, Mo says, you know, he talks about uh, the fallout with Rick Hilton. Talks it was about so the good. Finally, Hilton. finally, we get to the bottom of it. Well, not scene. everybody is okay with that. Miss Paris has made a statement. My father is a consummate gentleman and has always taken the higher road. He would never speak negatively about his family, especially in the press. Frankly, we are all sick of him using the Hilton name every chance he gets to plug his lame show. It's enough already. He's using um, the Hilton I'm, name, and she calls by in Beverly Hills lame. He didn't say anything negative about Rick. He said what many people, and I bet you as a business person, and I certainly have been when I was years on the Kane show, and that was always my point, is um, you want me to put in equal work as you, but you are not going to give me equal billing. It is not the Kane and Sarah show. It's not going to be. You should make more money. I'll make less, but I am not going to be your uh, beating person. I'm not going to be your whipping board. Um, and that is exactly what Mo said. Mo said 90% of Rick of Hilton and Highland's business came in for, from Mo. Mo was a, according to him, was an excellent salesperson and had hit thresholds and came to Rick, his brother-in-law, and said, I believe I deserve to be partner. I have done X, Y, or Z. And Rick said, I'll get back to you. And like many a businesses, Rick said, no, I'm uh, Highland and I are not interested in making you a partner. And that is when Mo went home to Kyle and said, I think I have to go. I think I can do this on my own. And he's proven that he can. And I don't have, and he said in the clip, I respect Rick. I, Rick and Highland are, inc they're incredible real estate. People. Clearly, Kathy, they're very, very rich. Um, but, you know, I, that anybody would be anyone in Mo's position would do the same thing. And many of people who are listening have done been in the same position or are married to somebody that has. And if you can bet on yourself, bet on yourself. And clearly the agency has been a huge success. So I, I mean that we know, you know, it's hard to say, right? I mean, real estate's really tough right now, but, um, but I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Uh, that seemed very trigger. That seemed, um, from Paris, like, I don't know, family feud. They, I think they're great at keeping a family feud going. And he didn't say anything negative about Rick and Rick and Kathy don't speak negatively of Mo. It doesn't seem like. And, um, I learned that when I dated that billionaire in DC, he never said Excuse anything. Me? He never said Excuse anything me? negative. I dated a beer guy in DC who, well, his brother was worth a billion dollars, but he was worth a lot. And he okay. never spoke negatively of any women that he ever dated or business. He always very, very strategic. I mean, he has a billion dollars. What is there to speak negatively about anyone for? Well, they You know just, what? If I had a billion very, dollars, I, I wouldn't need more. Rich people, very rich people always know they're on the record. They always, they're very strategic with words. And mm -hmm. uh, he just never would... Never would let you see his hand. And Rick and Kathy, I think, are like that. But Okay, this, so Sarah is team yes, Mo on this I, one. Guys. I believe Mo 110%. 110% on this. And I, I I think Rick is a terrific business person. But Rick, I believe, had a lot of family help, money, and that always helps. And but they look, I I adore Kathy. There's no one I Kathy is who I want to be. 
clueless to the world and every day waking up with just all my servants and going out to my fabulous back patio with my three beautiful children and the, all my grandkids and eating a potato piled high with a mound of caviar, caviar. having a glass of champagne Getting my facelift. I mean, Kathy's who I want to be. And she's the gatekeeper of Beverly Hills. But I do, I do believe, Mo, on that. And I, I'm not sure what, what did you make? I know you and Paris are friendly. And We're tight. What do you think? Um, you know, look, I mean, I mean, there's all, there are rumors. I'm not taking sides. There are rumors, you know, about like him leaving with files in the middle of the night and cleaning out the file cabinets and blah, blah, blah. And the way he did it was not above board. I mean, there's just, look, there's two sides to every story. Um, I believe that Harris, look, she knows the media, she knows the press. I believe it when she says they wouldn't, you know, go to the press. We do have Kathy, you know, in Beverly Hills reunion gives us more information about Kyle and Mauricio than we've gotten all season uh, by telling us Kyle's probably been planning this forever. Um, You know, look, I did it. I mean, I worked for a staffing agency and then said, I don't understand why I'm fucking here. I'm just going to have my own company. And then I started my own company. Then I sold it. Then I retired. There's lots of things, but it's not about me. So I'm all for if you're in a business, I'm like. We recently talked and I said, don't ever set up, um, don't ever open a sandwich shop or a coffee shop or anything. I believe when you have a business with like low overhead, like being a recruiter or, you know, a real estate broker, which is an independent contractor. Yeah. Like, why wouldn't you want to just, I think every real estate broker should go and set up their own thing eventually and hire people under them. And I mean, that's what the Altman brothers did. I mean, although they're part of Elliman really, but you know what I mean? So I see both sides of it. And I think in business, you do always have to do what is best for yourself. Apparently the feud is still going. Is he using the Hilton name to promote the new show? I mean, don't we all just use what we have? I mean, yes. I just had Countess Luann on last week. I mean, don't we all just use, isn't that the name of the clickbait game that sadly we're here we are. In and Paris's aunt, Kyle, comes on TV and gets big Ooh. tears in her eyes, big crocodile tears about how she Jeez. can't believe she's put Morgan through this. And the next night she's out with Kesha with a dingy sign at a paparazzi hotspot with Morgan. And it, it, it like, Oscar parties. They went Os- on to the Oscars. Morgan Wade. I mean, I, I don't know where I'm growing up. I watched that. Steel Magnolias with that Sally Field. And I never thought I would be in the same auditorium or, well, Morgan, you weren't at the Oscars. I mean, it's not like Kyle got invited to the actual Oscars. She did host the after show, but getting in the room, not going to get in the room with like Emma Stone. And, well, I thought I was in the room. Morgan, you were not at the actual Oscars with Kyle because Kyle was not actually at the Oscars. Well, fancy people. I know, Morgan, it was a different event. Anyway, girl, Morgan, we got to get on with our show here. Um, I call him the Nozempic Ben on Ozempic doctor. I'm talking about Dr. Applin and his wife who founded My Optimal Body. I am so happy about this. These are the first mindful eating based doctors I have ever partnered with. They see patients nationwide and they are seeing more patients who have been on Ozempic and Ozempic has failed for them. What makes My Optimal Body so unique and why am I endorsing them? It's because Dr. Applin actually looks at food additives, your, your addiction to food, your mental health. They do a whole look at you, including your gut health. Many of Dr. Applin's patients are working out, restricting their diets, and still gaining weight. Why is that? Because something's going on in your body and with your mind. Visit MyOptimalBody.com to request an appointment. Be sure to tell them the Sarah Fraser Show sent you so you can qualify for a free personalized assessment, plus a bonus free 30-day supply of their gut repair product when you sign up for a customized plan. Again, that's MyOptimalBody.com to request an appointment. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. Go to your happy price, Priceline. This episode is brought to you by Paramount Plus. Ewan McGregor stars as Count Alexander Rostov in A Gentleman in Moscow. 
the new limited series based on the best-selling novel. Stream it on March 29th with the Paramount Plus with Showtime plan. Visit ParamountPlus.com to try it free. I get your point. Well, Paris is not happy with her uh, uncle, so Mo. The good news is it's helping promote your show, which, and also, I mean, I don't even know if this is the same show that I watched the first season, because that trailer seems to me like we've revamped the whole damn thing, and we're going Vanderpump Rules, and we've got Alexia, and it's all about the 20-something-year-olds now. The first season was, and we had some 30s, we had some 40s, we had some people with kids. Seems to me like now that we have a little bit of a hit on our hands, we're taking a new new approach at this shocker it's the 20 somethings all sleeping around the office that people want to watch and mo will be the van de pump of the office i'm gonna watch it i love real estate porn my favorite type of show selling sunset best thing on tv did you watch uh your best friend miss jane bet it all on blonde girl bet it all on that? blonde i did i did are you ready to bounce, 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 bounce? I love all her songs. Like, they don't change. Girlfriend's heading to 60, and it's all about popping the puss. Right? I mean, it's just all about getting on a deck. Like, it's just so good. Let me tell you about bounce. It's a good tune, man. It's a good tune. She knows her audience. Um, That's going to be playing in every gay bar in WeHo from here to WeHo. Go on. I love her. I love her. I love her. I don't know. I, you know, she's. What'd such you a, think of betting on blonde? I uh, got a little repetitive. A little repetitive over and over of the rehearsals, and she wasn't nailing the rehearsal, and you know, it got a little repetitive. But we revealed that she was suicidal, and her her son is the one that came to her and said, "Okay, great, but what you know, what have you done to pull yourself up by the bootstraps?" And then we can talk about you know you not wanting to be here and so he sort of snapped her out of it um she talked about tom and more i guess about their marriage i mean ej i I love ej i just love her she is like this just gay icon starting over i don't know i i'm conflicted the marco marco guys seem so sincere to me about the mental anguish that she created on them what did you think? I I mean, she's she's ama- it's amazing. I, I think Mikey has been a very loyal friend to her. How lucky she is to have him. She just um, gave a huge post to him for his birthday and just like, we have been through it. No, look, I think she's had the same assistant and the same, you know, the assistant lived with her in New York and she, when she was on Chicago. And I mean, she's had Mikey. I mean, you know, for someone who's apparently a scumbag, you know, she has had, I really think... I mean, I can't keep a fucking team to save my life. I mean, so I don't know what that says about me. I'm not easy to work with, but you know, that, someone that yeah. has a consider, right? I mean, shocker. Someone I've, that has I've a stuck consi- around. I don't find, but we have a different kind of relationship. But I don't have to work. We have for a different right. Like you have your own thing, which is what I told you when you wanted to merge. I said, Sarah, just keep your own podcast it's the right thing to do for you see and we've lasted for years i will forever I just, love you for that i just had someone on my team leave in a huff after like two years and it's like you know i mean there's not going to be a good morning there's not going to be a how are you i just don't want to talk like that when i work i just don't want to i am not doing it i, I will say gonna... this you are who you are and i love that you never waver from that. I still am too nice in business. I really am. I'm too nice. I want I want people to feel heard and feel that. And there's some of that, but you know, once you own a business, it's, you can do a little of that, but then it's like, you, you're everybody's therapist. You're all this stuff. And really you just have to draw a hard line in the sand and go, this is the work environment. This is the place. This is the expectation. If you can meet it, great. And I do care about you. I want you to be a healthy human being that we work together and you thrive and you thrive. But, but there has to be a boundary. And if they can't keep it, then they got to go. And it, it sucks, but that's, you really have to do it. And I'm not, I'm, I'm not there yet fully. I just, it's like, there's just too much work to be done. And like, I can't have you on my team if I'm stressed out about your job. Now it's like, you're keep this shit keeps me up at night. Anyway, I, I I liked it. I liked, but I'm blonde. Eric has kept the same team. You know, here's the thing. And Brandy Glanville has recently spoken. I, there's a name that we haven't heard in a day. Brandy Glanville has recently spoken out. And she 
Look, I see this two ways. I don't really want to have a full discussion on this because everyone's going to be all outraged. Look, there is a real crisis in the world with people taking their own lives. When someone says that they are, like when I was young, I used to say all the time, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. I just don't say that anymore. But you know, I used to say it like when I was young in my 20s. Yeah, I, I got, I know. Yeah. I like, know. like, oh my God, I'm going to kill myself. Like, I don't say that. So it's like, I, you would, everything I think should always be taken seriously when someone is says, here I am, I'm suicidal. Brandy recently spoke out and said, you know, I don't know if I believe that Sandoval was suicidal. I get what she's saying. So, I mean, here we have Erica saying it. We have Tom saying it. Uh, I just think people should be careful about <laughs> So you don't believe it. it? Personally, I don't believe it. But, I mean, I think we have to take every, <laughs> every one that says this very seriously when it's brought to our attention. No, I mean, Brandy's like, isn't Tom a narcissist? Like, no, I don't, I don't think Tom Sandoval was, that's just me. That's my opinion. But um, yeah, I think, yeah, you have to take it very seriously. So it just seems like this is, everyone's just throwing this around. I don't know. EJ, look, it's, it's, EJ is a very strong woman, right? So, I mean, I don't know. But regardless of that, I liked the show it didn't do so bad in the ratings you talked about recently about potomac in the 600s it got like in the 500s i mean not bad for one of these spinoffs and you went to her show in vegas right i think you and i were supposed to go but i was like, post miscarriage there was lots of things going on so but you went was sold it, the was second it ticket i was gonna go twice sold the second ticket um Look, I mean, as a gay man, you got to go see Pat the Puss. It's like, it's it's something to see. Yeah, I mean, I I I love the new song and I have no regrets from going to see Miss Jane in Vegas. And if she wants to do a mini tour, get ready, Sarah, because you're going with me. I want to go. I want to see her. So, um, it was good. It was insightful. They played clips from the women that we've seen a thousand times of them questioning Erica. And I did think this part was true. Erica said, I will tell you right now, none of those women could ever go through what I've been through and keep their strength. And I do think that, I mean, she's a little icy for, you know, because she's been through it, you know? So I, I do think she could only go through what she's been through and some of them probably could come out the other side. Like I would almost put my money on Crystal. Oh, no way. Are you kidding? Oh my God. No. Crystal's offended by a fly. Are you kidding? Like Kyle oh my would God. be curled up a in a break. ball. Kyle and Sutton would be curled up in balls. I they mean, would not be able to leave bed. Sutton has survived Christian. And of course, we got a lot of backlash. How dare you? Um, it, it suggests that Christian should be with Erica Jane. I mean, it's a good match, I think. They're on a reality show where all they do is fucking drive around, have lunch, and fight. Like, Christian could be with whoever. Um, Garcelle, maybe, you know, Garcelle might be the sleeper one that's, like, been through a lot more and, like, silent. Yeah. She could be. Um, Dorit. I don't, I don't no know way. about that one. I don't no know. No way. Yeah. No. And who else? Anna Marie, <laughs> Anna Marie, Anna Marie. Anna, no way. I don't think Anna Marie's had a lot of. Uh, no. Uh, um, it was good. It was, I just, after a while, I mean, they kept going like day seven, day four. It's like, all right, let's just get to the show. You know, we Look, realized- I mean, what a great, every other thing is like, you're a princess, you're a pretty mess. I'm like, everyone just go to iTunes and download. I mean, this is a dream. It's like your whole catalog is being featured. And you know what I didn't find so shocking? I mean, this story surfaced last week or whatever, you know, Mo, Mauricio, he's at Kimbo's. First of all, the whole world went to Aspen. The way they all flocked to my backyard in the Hamptons in the summer, this is the time we go to Aspen, Ramona, this is when she leaves, you know, to, to do. And apparently, you know, Mo was at Kimosabi and they're shocked. They heard that he was talking that, you know, him and Kyle are like no longer together and, you know, this and that and, you know, um... Sorry, I'm not home. Um, you know, and that, sorry. And that- um, You think this is a promo is where you're going because Mo was No, overheard. I just think, well, yeah, he was overheard saying he's not with Kyle and their issues and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. And you know, he's a free man. It's like, am I in like a twilight zone? I mean, is how is this headline? Mauricio and Kyle are done. I don't care if he is like, 
playing with himself in his own room and she's stumbling in, you know, even though she doesn't drink like high on life, they're done. So how is this a headline? He can fuck anyone he wants as rumor as he has been for years and she can fuck everyone she wants. She doesn't want to fuck everyone. She's dating her best friend, Morgan White, and she's going to probably get engaged to Morgan and walk down the aisle there's no relationship. I just don't understand how this is shocking. We heard Mauricio say that he's not out with Kyle. They can do whatever they want. Duh. Even Morgan knows that. Duh. <clears throat> well, um, yeah, I, I, they're great at getting headlines. They are great at nobody still knows for sure if they're headed for divorce. or I mean, I guess they are headed for divorce, but. I mean, just uh, get a fucking divorce. It's still Sorry. headlines. <laughs> um, but I was just because I was also Googling Erica Jane's new boyfriend. Apparently she's dating her trainer who's like rather hot. But then, I, I, OK, this just popped up. Did you read that Erica Jane's alleged um, her lawyer friend that she says is her personal attorney? Oh, no, never mind. This was a long time ago. He was arrested. That was a long time okay, ago. Okay, never mind. We already um, okay, never mind. Anyway, EJ has an alleged boyfriend, which is her trainer, and he's hot. So good for her. But um, He is seen leaving her apartment, the bungalow, at all hours. Good. Hopefully she's having hot sex with him. He's, cu- he's very cute, very obviously in good shape, looks like a trainer. I don't care about the Mo thing, I think. But, you know, that story is super hot still, whether people – are tired of it or not. So anything he says makes headlines. I do think they're genius at promoting these shows and promoting their brands. And I mean, don't get me wrong, right? As the father of her children, look, as the father of your children, Teresa, Kyle, you, you, you always have a vested interest in the husband, ex-husband making money. Cause you're just like, go fucking ask daddy, Portia. Stop asking me. The check just cleared from RHOBH. So you always want your ex. I mean, Gia DJ. she wants another pair of Gucci sneakers. Go ask dad in the Bahamas. So you always want the ex-husband to... So yeah, I mean, look, I think these two will never hate each other. I mean, he's too busy mm-hmm. trashing Rick. But it's, it's over. So I don't know how this stuff makes headlines. It's over. Kyle and Mauricio are over. Everyone out there whose view of love is shattered. I'm sorry, life is not a rose garden. Does Monday at the office feel like a storm? Not with Microsoft Copilot. That feeling when Copilot gets everyone up to speed instantly, it's sunny again. When Copilot simplifies complex data so your teams can act, that sun's shining on a beach. And when Copilot uncovers hidden insights, you're on that beach with your people and you find buried treasure. That's Microsoft Copilot. Learn more at Microsoft.com slash AI for all. First, the bad news. SAP Business AI won't help you generate cubist versions of your family's holiday photos, but it will help you understand which supplier is best to help you roll out your plant-based packaging in Southeast Asia, or identify the training your junior project manager needs to rise up the ranks, and automate repetitive tasks while you focus on big innovations so you can be ready for the next opportunity. Revolutionary technology, real world results. That's SAP Business AI. Um, April, April, we have all these pauses. We have all these pauses and yet Beverly Hills with that over a million isn't gonna skip a beat. Really, it's gonna start right away in April. They are, taking, April, basically. They are taking a page out of Love is Blind, Married at First Sight, these shows just cra- – is it working? But I mean, is it working? They always did Sunset? that with Housewives. They always did oh, that. Oh, they did? And then, yeah, Housewives started right away. Beverly Hills, the last few years, right away. Even Potomac, it was all right. Do, do, do. New York, we are in a different time. We are in a different – everything goes, takes pause now. I guarantee – I mean, where the hell's Atlanta? Where the hell's New York? Every time I say that, someone says – They're going to start filming next week. Okay, I'll believe that. Reliable sources. I'll believe it when I see it. Regardless, New York has taken a break. Even if they announce the minute this podcast comes out, they're starting. It was a break. Atlanta is a break. The OC was a break. I think Jersey, we took a break and then we delayed starting. I think we're starting to just slow it down. And listen, I don't know nothing from my left ass from my right ass, but I guarantee you, I guarantee you, if I was in Vegas and I was betting, 
I guarantee you that P, the girls over there in the RHOP, Potomac, I guarantee you they take a nice little minute before we announce the new season starts filming where Robin Dixon is going to give us nothing, nothing. So this is shocking. I'm shocked they're starting right away. I mean, it's a few weeks break, but where's the cast? We're going to keep the same cast. It's possible. It's just, I don't know. I know there's the rumors that Kathy might return. I don't know if those are true. Yes, Kyla said she's open to Kim and Kathy and blah. I don't see Kathy really coming back, to be honest with you. Oh, That's you just don't. me. Why was she at the reunion then? To help Kyle, to support Kyle. I mean, and they called her. She <laughs> should come back. She should. I mean, what's the difference? Show up, give a few one-liners and get in your driver driving car and go to Cipriani's for a drink. It's like... Why not come back? How much fun is that? You know, when you're filming and you're not really part of it, you're just a friend, it really is just like going to a party or or, or attending enough events and they get enough footage out of you. It's, I'm not hard and fast. This isn't like Melissa Gorga's never coming back next season. But I could see a season where there's no Kathy. But I would like to hope that she comes back. But everyone's like, eh, eh. I think it's possible. I don't think it's really... I don't think she's back. Guaranteed. I just think she's back as a friend here and there, don't you think? I feel like we're going to get some scenes with Kathy, this, but I don't uh, think. I hope so. I do too. I love Kathy. I'm obsessed. Why I, not? I mean, like. Kathy's my favorite. Right? And we're going to keep the whole rest of the cast? I don't know. We don't think. A lot of people said snooze fest to the season. Y'all still watched, but lots of people said snooze fest. So, I mean, we can't really be talking about Kyle and Mauricio only. I think. I think maybe next season will be Kyle and Morgan. I think we're going to see Morgan. I God, mean, that would be awesome if they had this hot lesbian like affair and like what was they're going together on? every fucking minute. I love it every minute. Like, well, it's is just Dory in love. is Dory coming back or not? Because these reunions, it was I thought this was the takedown of Dory, and they are painting her to go away. I mean, I I think this is it for Dory. Do you? I truly think out of everyone on that stage, including Anna Marie, I think I've said this before, and there she is with nine lives. I think Dorit is the most in trouble. I actually think Anna Marie is going to be back. I think there's enough there. If you scratch the surface, everyone says whatever about Crystal or how, how many seasons in. You don't get fired for being a little boring in the beginning. You get fired for really, we you know there's nothing left. Like, so there's there is mystery with Anna Marie, whether you love her or not. We don't know a lot about her. Yeah, the husband, blah, blah, blah. But with Jory, it's like, what is left? Now she has marital troubles with PK. Yeah. You're having problems with Kyle now and you need to <laughs> reconcile. It's really not enough to save your job. I mean, you have a loan. You know, if you're having problems with Kyle, <laughs> then you're a friend of. Like Vicky is a friend of. And you need a loan scene. So forget about the problems with Kyle. What is Dorit's story? Problems with PK? I mean, we kind of just had that season where he's MIA in London. I don't know. I, I agree with you. I'm not sure she's not going to be back because she does have her quirkiness and her one-liners and her fake accent, you know, but I, I think she's probably the most in trouble out of everyone sitting there. I, I can't see a lot of other people going. The only two I could see going are Anna Marie and Dorit. Mm -hmm. There's the only two. Yeah. And we're not getting rid of Crystal. I, I hate to break it to everyone. Garcelle, no way. Sutton, no way. Kyle, no. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck if Kyle is. Do she does the same interview every year. Never say never. And it's a last minute decision. She's coming back. She's coming back. She's that upset that she's going to quit. She's that worn out. It's over. You, you, you're through the worst of it. Is you Denise, do you think Denise had enough of a moment that Denise is returning? Because that's sort, no. that sort of phased right out, huh? Despite Sutton's doing interviews saying she wants Denise back. No, I don't think Denise is coming back. I think if anything, her cameo didn't really help her. Yeah, yeah. Future. I mean, we need, like, you need to show up and actually work. No, Denise isn't coming back. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. Denise isn't great for 
a lot for reality TV. But I do wonder if we're seg if maybe there's a, a way where Camille Edwards is coming back and and a little bit Camille of Camille Grammar. Oh, thank you, Camille Grammar. I think no, I don't think anyone's coming back, but I think Camille is the one that should be back full force. Give her a diamond. I think Camille is just, I think one of the best housewives of all time. I think she is underrated. I think she can give it to everyone. She doesn't give a fuck. She's on Twitter all the time calling everyone out. She called her read out recently. I just think Camille is the one I would love to see with the diamond. More than anyone else. More even than Kim Richards. I, I want Camille back with a diamond. But I think, I really think nobody is coming back from the past full time. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a case for anyone. Really. Well, they've tried it. Opinion. And it hasn't really panned out. It's sort of panned out. It didn't with... um. Who's the one that was Beverly Hills and then jumped to RHOC? Uh, Tyler. Heather. You no. Know, Heather. Oh, Taylor. Arms, Taylor oh, yeah. Armstrong. She ain't coming back to Beverly Hills. I still do think, by the way, that Teodoro, the Nat, Teodoro, should be. You should cast Teodoro. I mean, get rid of Emily and Gina. And I mean, I can't believe I'm saying this. Cast Teodoro. Teodoro Melonball on. Uh, no way. OC. No. You're not know, a fan of the Nat. No, she's really segued on to, I think, I don't know if she's still an Access Hollywood contributor, but she's, I think she, yeah. I think it would be a step back. She has this, she's the greatest gig going for her with two T's. She's got a good gig. She's and that has a good gig. Incredible acts, incredible access to these people. The ratings are through the roof for two T's. She's got this Access Hollywood gig. She's sort of now this kind of almost red carpet, you know, reporter at BravoCon. Mm. Uh, no, I mean, it would be and not such, for nothing. Teddy is smart. Like, you know, there's a lot of these mm -hmm. women are not always like Teddy is a smart person. Like if you I'm sorry, everyone. I know everyone's going to come for me because you don't guys don't like the Nat. But she <laughs> is like an intelligent woman. Like, I think, look, a lot of these people don't have a business sense. I think Teddy has the business sense. So for everyone who thinks she's so boring, I mean, sometimes when you're a little boring, when you're a business person. So there you go. Yeah, you're right. I think it would be a step back for her. I think she would still take it. I think she, but she shouldn't. I mean, she's running, as you know, Sarah, when you run your own business, it's kind of the way to go. You can't be fired. You do things on your own terms. There he is, Oscar, a.k.a. by David Yontif. Love you all. Thank you for listening. Uh, by the way, tomorrow, David Yontif is back with updates and predictions about Andy Cohen versus Leah McSweeney Bravo lawsuit. We'll get into all that. And uh, uh, some other juicy stuff. Why am I forgetting? Oh, my Lord. There's too much going on here on the Sarah Fraser Show podcast. Oh, is the entire cast of RHOBH trying to get Dorit Kemsley fired? David's got scoop. See you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.